Today we're going to look at the construction method known as tilt wall for building structures. Before we discuss the actual details of how to produce a tilt wall building, let's watch a building being constructed using tilt wall methods. Walls that are going up on the building. Uh, these walls are the exterior walls that will be uh, on the outside of the building to help support the building. Uh, we currently have constructed 39 of the walls. There's a total of 81 of them to be done. If you look at the project, you wouldn't see 39 walls out there, but we have some of these walls that are actually stacked on top of each other. And these walls have been strategically placed to allow for the lift of these walls to come up in the near future. I know you're asking, how is this being done? They're not sticking together. Well, before each wall is poured, there's a special bond breaker covering placed on top of the concrete. This basically works like a wax on your car and prevents the concrete from adhering to the concrete below. These walls are up to 58 feet tall and 12 feet wide. They weigh as much as 46 tons. We'll begin the process of erecting the exterior walls of the building. The crane we'll be using to do these lifts is a 300 ton crane. All of the panels have been engineered with special lifting eyes in each one. The lift plan for each panel has been thoroughly reviewed. All of the necessary procedures and equipment will be verified before each lift takes place. As you can see in the video, the panel is picked up horizontally. As it continues to go up, the panel will get within seven degrees of vertical. It will then be walked into place and set on shims and leveled in place. Then large support kickers that are fixed to each panel prior to lifting will be anchored to the main slab and the wall will then be adjusted to perfectly straight. Safety is the number one priority for us. We will be using procedures and plans that we must follow to ensure each and every one of us go home safely every day. So now that you've seen briefly how a tilt wall building is actually constructed and you've got the visualization, let's talk about the history of actual tilt wall methods. It was first introduced in the early 1900s, but in the 1930s, post the Depression, uh, it suffered a decline in use because the government was trying to uh, infuse the economy to get people back on their feet again with the collapse of the markets. And so methods that required a lot more labor were utilized in the United States. In the 1950s, it accelerated use post-World War II because there were labor shortages, and since tilt wall construction doesn't require much labor, became a much more popular method to use. And then in the 1970s, engineers figured out how to create these tilt wall structures to where they could be used as load-bearing walls. And this was a key to the industry. From the 70s on, uh, tilt wall construction has accelerated its use in, in the United States. There are many advantages to using tilt wall. Uh, ideally, you want to use it on a one to three story building with a base square foot plan of about 50,000 square feet or more. And in a building that requires wall opening space to be less than 50% of the uh, existing square footage of the walls. Reduced labor costs is a significant advantage because it takes smaller crews and the, we actually have faster production times, which also leads to the scheduling aspect that, uh, and you'll see later on in the example that, that I'm going to present to you, that is if you have the casting beds where you actually lay the uh, and prepare the tilt walls on, if they're not located on the slab area, you get much more efficiency of time, and you can actually be producing both the slab and the walls at the same time. It's been a proven safety uh, process. Since the majority of the work is done on the ground floor and OSHA records that the number one safety risk is falls. So the time exposure that you have of the dangerous situation in lifting the panels up in the air is much less proportionately to conventional methods. Durability. Uh, there have been designs uh, 
and actually I'm going to include a, an article on the earthquake resistance uh, proven capability uh, of tilt wall construction and uh, blast resistance under proper specifications. Fire safety. Uh, concrete is proven uh, on most typical buildings to be four hours or more of fire resistance. That is significant when it comes to insurance premiums. The uh, ease of maintenance, obviously it's a very durable surface, so it would take a lot, as in a forklift or some other piece of machinery running into a wall, and it's fairly impervious to insect and rodent infestation. Repairs and expandability is another significant factor. The modular design, being the panels at a regular type width, allows easy expansion uh, of the base building square footage uh, for later uh, uses of the building. And security. Obviously, with the wall structure having openings of less than 50%, uh, this means that it's a, a, a very secure type building, uh, whereas in some steel and uh, uh, metal stud buildings, people can take saws and actually cut through the exteriors of buildings to get inside. So uh, it's a very secure type of facility. And of course, I talked about the reduced insurance premiums, and this is uh, due to seismic durability and fire resistance. Now, when you go to, to pre-plan uh, for uh, a tilt wall building, the first thing you need to do is prepare a cost estimate. And this example I've given you is of an extreme case, uh, a very, very durable building, the one that we actually saw the video on in the beginning of this presentation. Uh, this particular building was one foot thick wall panels, 58 feet tall, uh, very uh, secure structure, uh, meant to be blast resistance, uh, either from terrorism or from uh, refinery operations. And so you can see that the cost per square foot here is is rather high compared to other type of applications which you may have for retail buildings or office buildings uh, at such point that the uh, uh, tilt wall construction itself would probably be closer to about $25 to $30 a square foot. The next thing you do is the schedule and uh, you can see here that I've highlighted uh, the red arrows to show how the pouring of the panels and the erection of the panels overlap in their activities. Again, this was a rather complex project that we did this on, uh, but even still, the average days per panel was 1.3 days per panel. Uh, that is definitely faster than most conventional methods. And the most significant aspect of pre-planning is the engineering submittal. Now, when I say engineering submittal, I mean that this document has to be signed by a, a licensed engineer because it's very critical to get the embeds in the proper location, the uh, uh, rigging method for each panel to ensure that the shear and load forces when lifting the panel into place are sufficient so that the crane can be sized properly, that there isn't any undue uh, torquing on the panel to cause uh, any failure as the panel is being lifted in the air. So, Obviously, this is a very, very important aspect, and again, there are companies out there that uh, subcontract to general contractors specifically for this purpose to prepare these engineer-type drawings. And then the next most important element is the casting bed, uh, and you saw in the previous video where the casting bed was actually done on the slab of the building. And this is what this diagram represents. You can see the panels laid out um, across the slab. Uh, the building slab is sort of a semicircular area. It gets very tight when you are doing a layout on the existing slab. The ideal condition is to, pre if you have space around the perimeter of the building, to be able to lay casting beds off of the slab so that you can construct the slab and the walls at the same time. You can see that this can get a little bit complex, as particularly when it comes to your lifting operations, but again, uh, this is an important component of 
uh, preparing before you actually start the construction process. And then last but certainly not least is the safety checklist. Uh, this particular document was prepared by the uh, Tilt Up Construction Association and there are procedures that have been proven over time to be the most effective when planning for this type of work particularly uh, one of the more obvious ones, never stand under a panel. Uh, during, as you saw in the video, the workers have to get fairly close to uh, the tilt panel when walking it into place. But there are uh, methods such as not putting your hand under the panel, using a crowbar to help uh, guide the panel into its proper location on top of the shims and the footings. Things of this nature that have been proven time and effect uh, over time to be very safe operations. Uh, particularly of importance that you saw in the video was the uh, supervisor doing the hand signals to the crane operators. Those two individuals are key to a safe uh, lift sequence. So these are the elements that are involved in preparing a project to be able to construct it as you saw in the very beginning episode. And that's what we have for today. These are references that for those of you who are overachievers can go look up and learn more about the seismic designs and construction costs of tilt-up buildings uh, and their uh, properties uh, involved in tilt-up construction. I hope this was a beneficial learning experience for you, and uh, if you're not moving forward, you're going backwards. Thanks again. Bye-bye.